All right, back to power. Let's see. The kick's done. You gotta select one at the beginning if you want that thing. So this could be good. And then the if the stun takedown, as long as you chain it with a stun, it's pretty good. Like I said, with the vault jump thing, right here, once you upgrade it, you'll be able to stun your enemy for five seconds. And also with the reversing thing, right here, you can stun your enemy for five seconds. Then every time you kick your enemy, you got a chance to stun your enemy for for a couple seconds. So with this, you can insta kill all the stun enemies. Pretty easy. Very useful to get. More health is definitely the best way to go. So you want this, this, and this, because more health will make your life a lot more easier. You practically can double the amount of health. You're 25 XP, I mean 25 HP short of doubling your maximum health, but let me tell you, it helps. Alright, melee throw, pretty much based on your own preference. Multi throw, throwing weapons can only be thrown once, and by multi throw it does not mean, oh yeah, I can take a one handed weapon and get ready to throw it and throw it multiple times. Now, by throwing weapons, it means throwing stars and stuff, and those give you one shot for a throw. Which means, once you throw it, you cannot pick it back up. So, you know, if you decide to go throwing weapon way, go ahead, but let me tell you, you'll be paying a lot of money. Like, for example, like, let's see, I know I got it in here somewhere. Maybe down here? Ah, here. Yeah. Throwing stars. Like, I can make a couple throwing stars. Actually, let's just make one. Ah, there we go. Just for purposes of demonstration. Ah, ah eight throwing stars are equipped. So, I equipped the throwing star with the left button. And as you can see, I can push R2 to throw. I can, I can target multiple enemies. Come on. Can you guys group up for me so I can show the multi throw more efficiently? So I can just throw two at once. And then I've happened to go single throw. That's all multi throw does. But if you want to increase the uh, damage of your thrown weapon, multi throw is pretty useful. Anybody else? Good. Ah, uh, oh, back to what I was saying. Multi throws based on pure preference. But if you do do it, if three enemies are close together, you can throw three of the throwing knives or shurikens or whatever you got with you. And now you can also get this skill later, but you will need this one. Which will allow you to increase the damage of throwing weapons. It's okay, but I recommend wait till the end, unless if you're gonna be throwing everything in sight, which, you know, based on the fact that you gotta craft or buy the stuff and it's one use only, I don't think this will be like a must have. Now, like I said, melee throw, tap R3 twice, and then push R2 to throw. Pretty good, but no, it's based on your own preference preference. Just remember though, you get four weapons to equip right here. So if you throw all four, you're defenseless and you're forced to fight with your hands until you can pick back up your weapons. And if you're not skilled enough, it will hit you. Now, you hold triangle, you can fix your weapon. As you've seen though, with the repairs, it had three and I successfully repaired it without wasting a repair, which is the aspect of this perk which will give you better get you better at repair where weapons won't break as often which means pretty much no I can repair this a time and get like a free repair out of it it'll still cost me a metal part but you know I can still keep all the repairs for this weapon it doesn't always work it is a chance but I think it 
it's a pretty good chance that no, it won't happen every time, but you know, it's reliable. Now, for power, no, power attack, hold out two, kind of useless, nothing good to chain with. Two handed weapons type skill, two handed weapon skill, kind of useless, but drop attack. I'll try to see if I could show you a thing of that real quick. Come on, zombie. I need another volunteer. You get to be on YouTube. Alright. As you see, I climbed up. Now I'm gonna jump down and I'm gonna push R2. Boom! Chop a zombie head open. And you can do it from the ground, but it's not as effective. But yeah, you just jump off from something. I think a normal fall will work. Nope. Apparently you have to jump. But yeah, you jump off from something, aim for a zombie, push R2. If you want, you can multi-push it just to make you feel better. I think one push should be good enough, but if you want to multi-push it, you can. One more zombie. Volunteer is done. Get out of my face. Ah, now, like I said, cool skill. It'll lower your drop damage, but you know, not from falling. But you know, it's a uh, purely up to you. And you do have to waste a skill point in this. And this is for one-handed weapon only. Keep in mind that if you want to run with two-handed weapon, this is useless to you. Uh, now then, like I said, this will help you increase the weapon durability, not pretty much by decreasing the amount of durability loss, means more swing out of a weapon before you have to fix it. Highly recommend. Alright, then with this, like I said, you now hitting the same memory more times will deal more damage, highly recommend, and then kill frenzy, highly recommend. Give you more XP per kill. Stop, highly recommended. More armor, very highly recommended. You should always go for it. Takedown, highly recommended. Because as long as you can sneak up on them like this, as long as you can sneak up on them, oh well. Uh, as long as you can sneak up on them, you can kill them. Like I said, slide ability, kind of useless. Because I could slide under there, but I could just jump over it just as easy. So it's kind, it's kind of, do you want to look cool or not? And slides in agility. Now, as you level up slide, though, if you kick while sliding, you can pretty much break legs. But, you know, kind of pointless. And that's a brief coverage of all the things. Sorry that takes so long, but you know, I want to make sure everybody got a full understanding. If you enjoyed and you found it useful, I am happy that I could help you. And that's pretty much it. Like I said though, these will give you access to the traps around the map. Like you've seen, you can have a basic access of the light trap, which will only work for night. But there's some electricity trap and car traps around the map. Right here, light trap. Like, you can turn on the light trap normally. After a couple of missions in. Which this is useless unless if it's nighttime and it just keeps back people that comes at night. Like the infected. What you got UAV light to do already, so you know, it's up to preference. UAV light recharge flashlight, your main flashlight that you control with the up button. It does not have a cooldown, so you can just keep it on the full time. To help you see better. 
Now let's throw inside these guys. But yeah, as you seen, as long as you get enough of these skills and know just how to combine them into your playstyle, you can do pretty good. But like I said, back leash is kind of worthless because what it does is when you push triangle, you can look behind you. And all black leash does is when you push triangle to look behind you, which is why you're running by the way. Hey, I was wondering where you might be. Thank you for volunteering your services. I'm gonna kill you now. Ah, uh, that does not work on him. Uh, thank you for your weapon. Hey, off me. This nice man died, volunteer his services and give me his weapon. Come on, pick up weapon. Yes. Alright. Now, this is a heavy rebuy you only get from those big guys by killing them. Now, to show you. Hey! Follow me, man! Now, to show you the ground pound. Alright, wait. How did it go again? Uh, no wait, it's in this one. Come on, I'm trying to demonstrate something. You guys are so mean. Oh, well, I'm gonna go back to the safe house and then demonstrate. Yeah, I should have probably just killed them. I did not wanna... Hurt them because I'm gonna use them to demonstrate. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah, right here's the ground pound. Apparently, you gotta be on top of a building. Uh. But yeah. Cool, but no, kind of not necessary. And keep in mind, no matter what you do, if your weapon hits, it'll lose durability. Now, like if I had this world in this Billy, which I did not buy it to get, because I don't use two-handed weapons, you could do a world and spin with this. And then this will increase the range of the ground pound, but you know, kind of pointless. Now with this weapon though, it does consume a lot of stamina. One swing will take out your stamina normally if you don't have any upgrades to your stamina. But as you see, if you upgrade your stamina, you can do two swings. And then you got to cool But yeah. Let's see. But yeah, that's basically the basicness to all the skills if you got any questions feel free to ask but this should give you pretty much a good knowledge with the skills now with blueprints you can get stuff I'm going to show you later where you can go to get the sword Excalibur but you'll get the sword and then you'll be able to get a blueprint as long as you wait for the bite to disappear it requires the bolter tissue which is kind of a pain but Excalibur is kind of a lousy weapon like I have played with it its durability is only 7 and you cannot fix the weapon so pretty much as soon as that durability drops it's worthless it might as well be a toy. But its damage is pretty high up there. But you know, like I said, once the durability drops, it's worthless. But yeah, it's still a cool big huge golden sword. I'll show a video later 
about how to get it and stuff if I can.